All right, a circuit like this is a little bit more difficult. Uh, however, it's going to allow us to use this technique called walk it out. Um, uh, it's a technique that I like to show a lot of my students, and um, uh, it really helps to simplify the circuit and to you know to picture it in a way that looks a, li a little bit simpler uh, for us. So uh, this technique kind of uh, imagines that you you leave this terminal and you just kind of travel along, and you just travel along the wire. And you're just kind of walking along it, walking along it, and you hit a resistor. And uh, that's R1. And there's no other path for you to go on. And so your resistor R1 is, uh, uh, we can kind of just redraw this as walking along, walking along, and hitting R1. So there's our R1. We'll label that right there. And let's move through it. So we're going to move through R1, and we're going to walk along, walk along, walk along, and we get to this. Now this is a junction, OK? and there's a split. Now this is, uh, once we see this uh, when we're dealing with circuits, we automatically want to think um, parallel, okay, because our electrons have two paths that they can travel on. Uh, they can go this way or they can go down this way. However, as they walk along the circuit, they are going to all meet back at this bottom position over here. So uh, these electrons are going to walk it out through here and come around and these are going to go straight down but they are going to meet at this point okay so how do we draw that out well I like to draw my splits like this uh, just kind of clear cut we can have R2 up here and R3 is going to be on the bottom split okay now, interestingly enough, if you look at the R2 wing, as you walk it out along there, you actually get to R5. And there is no choice for where the current can go. So you must add that in series to the top wing, which is with R2. Okay? And, uh, and then these, they meet, so we can kind of close this off. And then, and then as they meet, at this point, they're going to join and then travel and walk it out along and they're going to all have to pass through R4 together and so R4 becomes another resistor in this case in series and then we can close this circuit off and now I think you can see it's a little bit of a more simplified view of the original circuit uh, here you can clearly see things that are in series and things that are in parallel with each other so this question is asking us to find the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Okay? And the rule is to do parallel before series unless there is a series within a parallel. Okay? Well, there is. We see R2 and R5 are going to be our series within the parallel. So we're going to want to add those first. So let's go ahead. We're going to just do it step by step, and we're going to draw the next picture here. So the next picture is going to be this uh, voltage. We have our R1, and then we have our split, and we're just going to combine R2 and call it uh, R2 and R5 and call it R25. And on the bottom we'll have R3, and still we have R4 sitting right there. And we'll come back, go ahead and close this circuit off again. And so we have a slightly more simplified view. Okay. And now we can go and take care of the parallel. So, just a second. Okay, back to this video. So, uh, now that we've uh, combined R25 and um, okay, so now the next step is to take care of these parallel resistors. And so we're going to combine R25 and R3. So here's our voltage source again. We have R1. And we'll just write that out as, again, a single resistor. And we'll write, draw it out as R253. And then now we're going to have R4 right here. And we can close the circuit off. So now we have just three resistors in parallel, I mean in series, and the final simplification step can just be one REQ. We can close that off and it's just gonna be all three together. 
All right, so uh, so now we can see again this the strategy here is to take care of series within parallel first, then parallel, and then you just have a series problem. Okay, and now we can do all the math uh, behind it. So let's go ahead and get into that. So the first step is going to be to take R2 and combine it with R5. And I'll just go ahead and write the numbers in uh, here. So R2 plus R5, we got 7.39 plus 9.47. And that's going to be 16.86. So we have uh, equivalent resistance here of 16.86 ohms. All right, and then now we're going to combine R25 and R3. And the way that we're going to do that is we are going to All right, so now we're going to do the math to combine these resistors, and I'll go ahead and do that math right here on the left side of the screen. And the first step is going to be to combine R2 and R5. So these guys are in series, so we'll say R25 is going to be equal to just the two of them added together. That'll be 7.39 plus 9.47, and we get an answer of 16.86. So R25 is going to be 16.86 ohms. Now we can see in the second image over here that we have R25 and R3 in parallel. Okay. Now I'm going to show a different technique how to solve parallel resistors. We can do a, a, a system where we multiply the resistances on top and add them on the bottom. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like. So I'll label this as R253, which is going to be the um, all three of those combined. And it's going to be 16.86 plus 9 point, sorry, times 9.05 all over 16.86 plus 9.05. All right, let's go ahead and plug these in and see what happens. And uh, as usual, we're going to get a value that's less than both of our resistors, and it's going to be 5.89. So remember, anytime you're in parallel, it's going to decrease the overall resistance. So we get a 5.89. All right, next step now is to take all of these in series with each other, and we're going to want to combine all of them. And so I can label this R1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we're just going to do a series calculation, which is just simply addition. So 9.62 for my R1 plus, and then my R253, which is in the middle here, is going to be 5.89 plus, and my R4 is 9.33. And we get a final answer of 24.84. So my REQ is equal to 24.84 ohms. And uh, this problem could go further to ask us what the current is because they gave us a voltage. And so we can say I is equal to V over R and we can solve for the current. We can even take this question, and I might do so in the future. I might take this question, and we can solve for certain values of voltage drops across individual resistors. We can take power dissipated through resistor R5. Um, there's a lot of things that we can do with this question, okay? So if we get time, maybe we'll come back and take care of those things.